Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> my calm moment. Let me tell you all about my calm moment. We suck again, man. We suck again. I can't believe it. I I am uh I'm very disappointed. I'm very disappointed uh at this game. I stayed the whole time. I know you're gonna make a comment about that. I stayed. Oh man, that's brutal. That's to think that we would have gone and gone at our own home and lost three scores. That's brutal. It is <laughs> Well, when you were busy driving Earl's Ark uh, it was, it's, uh, the score just went away from me, but I believe it's 28 to 13. No, that can't be right. They just put up, they just put something up and I just lost the score in a second. So I'm gonna have to get back to you on that, but, but the Chicago is winning. Yeah. 20, 28 to 15 with three minutes and 40 seconds left. <laughs> it happens sometimes. It's all right. We all have mistakes. It was three quarters of a game. Three quarters of a game. Oh, no. My boy. What do you say, my boy? Get it. Not for one second. Don't even, don't even attach my name to that man. Well, if his classes weren't public speaking and how to use social media, I don't think he was paying his money in the right place, but that's just me. Yeah, he had a homer. His 100th homer happened to be back at his old stadium. He's just feeling it. <laughs> yeah, I'm 
I know. I mean, you know, we're always pumped and ready for Thursdays because we like to, you know, mix it up and, and uh, talk trash to our fellow hosts on the neutral zone. But uh, other than that, man, I'd say it's relatively quiet. I'm ready to talk Cardinals. All right, well let's let's start with uh, with one player. He can chime in when he gets on here, but the the Cardinals made a roster move today. They let go of Michael Crabtree. My thing is two games, four catches. Two games, four catches. That's not a lot of production. Crab tree. <laughs> Two fives.
right on the nail. Yeah, because, hey, we got to echo there, Sean. What you doing? <sighs> Trying to get your audio working. right you see that's that's where i'm i'm coming in asking the question and the question is going to be when does cliff kingsbury actually have total control of this team because that game yesterday that was a scenario where the head coach was supposed to come in and override that struggling defensive coordinator and come up with something some type of adjustment to 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 slow down those two avenues that killed him in that game with the running game and the tight end. There was no type of adjustment, in-game adjustment at all. And and earlier today I heard Kingsbury come back and say, well, he's been coaching a lot in this league, so he just kind of left them alone. That gave me the idea that you don't have the authority to go and say, look, I'm taking over this or let's do this. You're head coach. You're supposed to be able to do those type of things. And why can't why can't he do those type of things on a in a game type setting, or does he have that type of authority? And it looks like he doesn't. He better he better start to apply that type of his role is such that he's the head coach. But it's when you look at the situation with the Rams with McVay, and, and so when you when it's almost he was really brought in to focus solely on the offense, and thankfully they they realized success quickly. And because of who they have as their defensive coordinator, they right. were able to see some game defensively as well because of his pedigree. But you have to the, – the, the, I think there has to be a clear a lot of demarcation that I am the head coach, and you have to be involved at whatever level that is. I think he – it seems to me that he come, he's coming in saying, I'll handle this, you handle that. Right. Maybe I'll come – maybe I'll give you some suggestions here and there, but you know what you're doing, so go ahead and do what you're doing, dog. And that's not really going to cut it because what's going to happen is going back to what I, what I was alluding to maybe about Crabtree is that people in the locker room see that. Right. Again, whether it's sports or whether it's in the in the business world, you see if your manager or your coach or your district manager or your GM doesn't have quite the power that they that their title says that they do. And then you start to come in a little bit later to work or you start to not focus 100% on practice or you exactly. not, or you don't necessarily do the little things to make you successful, not even if it's for this year, but the building blocks for the following season. Correct. You start to you start to make those you start to take some shortcuts along the way. Man. Yeah, I know we're going to we're going to continue into this Cardinal so we're talking to Javon Adams from the Easy Sports Talk Show Saturday mornings. 
on uh, NBC Sports Radio AM 1060. You can also catch that show on KSRN. So real quick, I know I don't know if you caught that ASU game. What's your thought process on where they are right now after seeing them go into that game uh, on Saturday? It's the, the result, and I heard this on a couple of different radio stations just today and saw some things on social media about, again, it's that instead of it's the person that wakes up in the morning and maybe they stub their toe when they get up in the morning on the, you know, on their bedpost and they say, it's going to be a terrible day. <laughs> and then everything from that point on is a, is a manifestation of the negative thoughts that they have from the beginning of the day when you actually can control it. The, 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 I think the market here was one of that the sky is full and the is me type of thing just from a collective uh, sports perspective this weekend. But with ASU, I think they they under they I think they started to really feel themselves a little bit. Oh yeah. It's the it's the it's the, it's the young man that that thinks that you know that he can tell say no to his dad and tell his dad what he's going to do and his dad has to put him in his place. Right. And you have to stay focused on every opponent because you're not good enough to where you can just step on the field and people will be intimidated by you. Right. You have to give full effort because there's a lot of young players that are playing for ASU, and that's. You can't you can't count on the defense to always win for you. Right. Um, coaches don't, aren't necessarily always perfect, but you can always bring the right effort to be able to put yourself in a position to win a game. And that's a game that, coming off of what they did with Michigan State, even though Michigan State is in a powerhouse, but it, you know, the, just the 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 stature of that team, you should have been able to to bring home a win. And right. Right. I think you'll probably start to see, because you were there, I think you'll probably start to see the the attendance start to tail off because fans are just waiting for that other shoe to drop to, right. to be able to see, do something else on my Saturday afternoons or Saturday evening, fortunately. What do you think, Sean? Do you think that was like a defensive, where, where their defense is, that they were not as good as we thought they were, or was it just the opponent that made them look that good? You know, Colorado can be pretty uh, prolific in that sense that they, they could score quick, fast, and in a hurry. And I think it was a mix of both of those things, honestly, not to take, you know, the the exact fence. But um, that ASU defense still isn't built quite the way Herm wants it to be, I think. I think there's still another year of recruiting that's got to come in and, and really establish his system. So they still have issues in certain parts of the defense that they're going to run into. Um but Colorado can score, and they showed it. Oh, uh, and that quarterback was pretty damn good, man. Absolutely. <laughs> but you... it's, it's, I think it's if you that's all that's all true. I mean, it all played out that way, and it's all true. And when you look at Colorado's offense and what they can do, but here's here's the thing, and, and Sean, you know, because you're you know one of your kids is playing football now, and you can <laughs> tell a kid go up up and in, up and in, up and in. This happened to my son when he was playing on Saturday as well. Go up and in, no matter what you do, and all and what happens, they get sucked into uh, to to a to a counter play and they end up miss, missing the whole play and, and it comes around the back end. But the point is you can tell a team, do not overlook this team. This team is, is powerful. Mm. This team is, is potent. Right. Yet they still, and they're, they're already tuning you out because they, they believe in the hype, even when they know they should be even more laser focused on the opponent on Colorado, as opposed to Michigan state, because they do have that offensive potency. Right. That's a good point, man. And shout out to your so, son too for that win on Saturday. Yeah, he but he did mess up one of those things. The coach told him, and I heard him say, "Go up and in." And he it was you know they did a little fake, and he said, "I just told you, I just told you, <laughs> I just told you to watch for that." And that's that's one of the things you you. Hey, he, you know, he's probably looking at butterflies. I have no idea. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you got yourself a superstar on your hand. Sometimes they improvise out there and see something different. Well, thankfully, you got the game winning tackle, but you, <laughs> but you can't. You have, you have to focus. You have to. It's focus is important. Right. Focus is important right. Whether we're preparing for our shows or, or whether we're whether you're on the football field or whatever, it's that focus. It's that. It's the little details. And I'm I'm not the dude that's trying to tell people to be in the be at the office for 19 to 20 hours to find that when his knuckle when when his knuckle moves just a little bit, then you know he's about to go to. No, no, I'm not talking about that. But if right. you do what you need to do and stay focused and stay intense, then more than the nothing, you're going to come up on the positive side of that. That's, uh, that's right. Go ahead and let us know what's going down on Easy Sports Talk this weekend. 
Uh, we are off this week. Oh, is that right? Yeah, we are off. No this week. days off. He was playing, so uh, so so him and I decided to take this week off. We just want to do a quick one-hour show, so we we could do some, we went through all the summer and didn't really have any weeks off. We didn't have any any Saturdays. We took this time off. Okay, then. Well, I guess I'll catch you on the Believe podcast then. Yes. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for filling in for Andy. Yeah, I did us some face happen with the coach family friends, so we don't mess with fun on the believing everything in the coolest podcast. We'll give you an opportunity to vent some. Oh yeah, you know what I'm gonna do it too. That is Javon <laughs> Adams from the Easy Sports Talk, and and also Microphone Masters, one of the best shows we got on the network. Thanks for coming in, bro. We appreciate you. Thanks, Jay. Good man. Thanks. All right, Appreciate take care. We're gonna go ahead and take a quick break here. We'll be right back, Bird Gang. Stick around. We're going to take a little break, but we'll be back in a while, so uh, don't nobody go nowhere. MPX, a neighborhood joint located at 4717 East Bell Road, is not just another restaurant. It's a community partner and gathering point. At MPX, everything is made from scratch. The menu is a creative spin on traditional American classic. Every item on the menu has a story behind it. From Ashley's Biscuit Chili, raised short ribs, to the PB&J French Toast, there's a new favorite waiting for you. In addition to being the ideal neighborhood joint, MPX is committed to uplifting the community, partnering with local schools, hosting benefits, and give back. If you're looking to schedule an event, MPX, a neighborhood joint, is the perfect location to come together. And while you're there, be sure to check out the 195-inch TV. For more information, call MPX at 602-788-7134. Visit www.mpx.life. Follow us on Twitter at MPX Life. Like us on Facebook or stop in. Again, we're located at 4717 East Bell Road in Phoenix. MPX, the official neighborhood joint of the Easy Sports Talk Show. Be sure to tell a friendly and courteous staff Ed and Jim sent you. Whether a growing family or an upcoming retirement, Debbie Bishop of Homeowners Financial Group USA LLC is there to help. As a generational lender, Debbie assists everyone from first-time homebuyers to seniors looking into reverse mortgages. With products like FHA, VA, conventional, and jumbo financing, Debbie will work with you to find the loan to best fit your needs. Call 480-305-8505 for a consultation or apply online at homeownersfg.com forward slash Debbie Bishop. MLS number two. 34947 BK0906222 NMLS number 93718 Equal Housing Lender. Tune in to the hottest hip hop music in the valley. Mm-hmm. Music from all the local artists only right here on KSRN, the hottest internet radio station on the web. Featuring artists like Blaine Coffee, J Love, Bad Hollywood, mm-hmm. Frontline Music Militia, and more. Hip hop all night from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. daily, right here on KSR in Arizona. KSR in the exclusive voice for all fan clubs and the community. Welcome back into the Casual House Bird Gang. Earl Burnett, Sean McConnell here every Monday. We do this show for you guys so we can get you the Cardinal news and Bird Gang happenings in the Bird Gang community. Got a lot going on in the Bird Gang, and we're going to get to that a little later. But uh, we're going to get into this game because I know we only got so long to dissect it. All right, man. So let's let's start let's start let's start with where we know the problem was in that particular game. I was doing a uh, uh, a guest on a, the Cave Show on um, PLR show uh, this earlier this afternoon. You've been ranting all week. It's only been Monday. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> Actually, I wasn't ranting on his show. I, I got I got to that calm level already. Oh, now, there we go. I kind of I kind of understand what's going on, but. I still have questions about some major issues that just mm. you could just that are obvious, man. Like my first my gripe was was this. Okay. 
coming into this game as a defensive coordinator and you you look at who you're game planning against, you already knew just by history, just by what that team does, that Greg Olson and Christian McCaffrey were going to be their primary weapons that they were going to use to attack you with. Then you looked at the, the also that you look at you thinking, okay, Cam Newton's not playing. Okay, so you should be able to neutralize a backup quarterback. Hmm. Instead, we'd had no specific plan in place to guard that tight end and to stop the running game. It's like we just, just overlooked it. Where is that specific game plan, that specific type of move that you make to counter what they're doing? What they what they're doing. They had a plan on us. Their plan was easy: keep those receivers in front of you, and then force them to be one dimensional, which is what they did. Now, granted, where was our game plan at, man? I didn't see no game plan planning for the defense coming in. I uh, I absolutely get your frustration, especially when you just look at the box score and you look right. at and you look at the stats. But if if, and I know you can't, but if you could take away that 76-yard run from McCaffrey, he's under 100 yards. Okay. And, and I would say that's a plus. You still I don't have an answer for Olsen, though. Olsen. And that's where and it becomes a problem. The problem. Correct. So I, I so agree with that. I don't know. I, I don't know where the game plan was. I don't, I don't know where it went. I don't know what people were thinking. Um, I mean, I, I just put the, the question up on Facebook right now. How many more games does Vance Joseph have left to figure this out? Right. Zero, one, two, or three plus. I, I, yeah. I can't see it being more than four games to figure this out. You cannot come into a game. I mean, I, 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 like I said yesterday, like I said yesterday, the offense played well enough to win that game. Mm-hmm. The dynamics of the game changed when, of course, they continue to answer our scoring that we finally came out and did early right? and got a touchdown. They answered, I mean, right back. Kyler and them just sat down. Next thing you know, touchdown. They're like, whoa, you know, we got to get right back up and go back out there and do it again. And, you, and if the defense gives you two stops, three stops, somewhere in between there, now you can play ahead and be, and then you can add your running, the running to your, uh, to your offense. Right. But, Man, they 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 this the defense just did not show up to play. Now, I, would, I don't know why or how. I would say that Chandler showed up. I will give him that. Chandler showed up, and now obviously you want him to get a sack every attempt because he has that ability. Sometimes this is not possible, but he was the only one that was active. I mean, I, a, I missed there, the 2015 DJ Swearinger. Forget the penalties. Go uh, ahead and get a penalty. Uh, Put your hat on somebody. Man, that's definitely not the same dude we saw out there. He was, I I know one thing DJ Swearinger can do, he can count to the from uh eighty to eighty nine. <laughs> that's all he was seeing the back of every tight end we've played. He can count that number on the back and and read that number that's on their back. He he knows that. But you said something about Chandler Jones. I'm just gonna slightly just throw something in to play devil's advocate when it comes to Chandler Jones. A Let's do bit. it. Chandler Jones plays hot and heavy first quarter. And that's where you see him get all those strip sacks and he, he gets the pressure. He needs to get better as the game goes on. And he fades away when mm. the game goes on. And sometimes he gets the reason why I'm not, I'm not trying to knock him being the sack leader. I know everybody. The reason why a lot of the national media overlooks him about being the sack leader and they didn't add him into this mix of all these sack guys that are supposed to be running for the uh, MVP is because Chandler gets a lot of garbage sacks in mm. the end of games when games are not competitive. And that's okay because, hey, you, I mean, you get your sack, you get a sack. It's hard to get a sack in the NFL. So you're but saying more clutch sacks, more prime times. He, exactly. Prime time he, needs to be, he needs to be as on fire as he is in the start of a game. He needs to be even more on fire during the course and at the end in that fourth quarter when we really need him. Mm. And I did not see no pressure on that young kid. That young kid shredded this defense. Now, I, for the pass rush, I'm always going to think that it's a, it's a two-man game. You can't be a one-man wrecking, wrecking ball in the pass rush. True. 
to, oh, yeah, to every know. Reggie White, there's always someone on the other side, you know? So get into that. that means well, my eyes are directly on Suggs when it comes exactly. to this. Because you set up one, he sets the, the other. Someone's got to be doubled, which means someone has to be not doubled. I mean, that's how that works. Yeah. Instantly, instantly, instantly after I watched this tape again, I said, oops, there's your first adjustment. You have to switch T. Suggs and get him spot duty and put Cassius Marsh as your starting right and as your starting uh outside linebacker right there because he was winded after a half of a first quarter he was winded mm. like i mean i know we're getting he getting old up there in the tooth and all those things but man how could you be blowing wind that early in the game the thing so, that i haven't noticed since uh James Betcher left is i don't notice as many defensive line rotations I remember with Bowles, it was almost like every other play was a different line rotation coming in. Where you had fresh bodies, fresh bodies, fresh bodies, and you had Correct. guys that were playing. Why aren't we rotating Rodney Gunter in more? Why aren't we doing these things more? I have no idea. And see, that's where the next, the next thing that really made me heated. I'm thinking, okay, we went into halftime. It was what, 14-10? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we came out of halftime – Went right down the field. I'm like, okay, now that's what I'm talking about. We, we st- Defensively, I thought for sure that a, some type of adjustment was going to be made to guard that tight end. Do you know they came right back out there and they put the same dude on him, DJ Swearinger, with his braids flying behind, running behind somebody, <laughs> can't catch up to nobody. And I start to think, if I'm a defensive coordinator, okay, Hey, look, we got to start taking a few some chances here. First of all, stop giving the guy 10 yards off the line of scrimmage. Mm. I mean, Greg Olson was hobbled coming into that game, coming off an injury, and made that defense look like not like a Manador defense. Six catches, so, 75 yards, and two touchdowns. Man, unbelievable. And he was hobbling. Now, and I don't so – I don't get this mindset that we've had for years since since Daryl Washington. And I'm going to keep saying this is going to be the thing that I'm going to keep saying all year long unless they make a trade and make something happen here. But we have not had a linebacker cover a tight end. It is oh, yeah, it, it seems wow. like it's always wow. a small cornerback or a small cornerback turned safety with this dollar back right. and all this stuff. And right. Correct. Yeah, you, you can work it into certain packages, but this cannot be your base defense with this going on. You need a guy yeah. that can run sideline to sideline and bring the heat. And we have not seen that since Daryl Washington left for his career in smoking pot. But what are you going to do? <laughs> well, since we don't have a Daryl Washington, you have to work with what you have. You have to find some way to adjust. I mean, I, I have to take back. Uh, 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 I have to I have to retract a statement I made on social media yesterday where one guy uh, put out a statement and said that don't worry Bird Gang this will all be good defensively when Patrick Peterson comes back and I said to myself and I wrote back Patrick Peterson's not covering the tight end you're Patrick right Peterson, but then I thought about it after fact I have to retract that because he does make a difference even though he's not guarding the tight end he would make a difference because yep. he can shut down a whole half of the freaking field, first of all, and then that would free up Buda Baker or somebody faster right. to guard tight end. And so the, I kind of retract that because I, I was thinking, you have what you have on the field. Like, get, you know, you got to work with what you have. I just wanted to see some type of adjustment. And Put not, Buda and, on him and see what happens. See, and see if Murph can hold up. See if. See, oh, we already knew Swearinger wasn't holding up guarding the Titans. He'll throw him back there to be the safety. Yeah. I mean, you know, switch it up. Put and some more speed on the guy. It's not that Patrick is going to make a huge difference against tight ends because he is still outsized. I mean, he's a bigger corner, but he's still outsized. But the difference he can also make in zone is just baiting you into a throw that you can't make. So he may not be technically assigned to the tight end there, but he may jump that route if he can cool. and take yeah. the pass out. Right. Not to mention, if he does have to grab, uh, guard a tight end, he's still pretty good with deflections. I mean, let's just be honest. He can deflect a lot of balls out. He's not right. always punching them out, but he's always tipping them out. So, yeah, I mean, is it possible that the Cardinals win 10 straight games when Patrick comes back? No. <laughs> but will it help? Yeah. And right. hopefully by then, the schemes are better, the blitzing's better, the offensive line protection's better. Right. And for the most part, you have a good team there. 
you have some flaws, certainly, that will they be addressed? We don't know. But what do for you now, think? Maybe. What do you, yeah. What do you think is the issue with the defensive line up front? Are we just too old, too slow, or or or, or do we just lacking talent? You said on which side of the ball? On the defensive line. <sighs> I'm t- what does it look adding- like? What does it look like? I mean, before I before you answer that, I'm gonna just say this: I can guarantee you, next week, that Kyle Allen will not look like he looked this week. Mm. He's gonna look like he's supposed to look next week. Ky- Why can- is the defensive line not able to get pressure? Not able to handle, handle. I mean, a flow of a game where there's sometimes the teams is going to score on you. We know that, but there's sometimes when the defense actually stands up and stops somebody. Right. Why are we having issues with that? Like I think it's what we said earlier. There's not enough rotations in that line. There's not enough fresh bodies. If you're going to go with some older guys, I mean, we had Dwight Freeney. He was, he had the AARP card already. He was pushing the the the, the wheelchair to get out there, but he was out there one every four plays. Right. So he was fresh. He was absolutely fresh. You can't you can't expect Suggs to be an every down linebacker or a pass rusher in this league right now. You can't. He's a great player. He's yeah. still a strong player, right. but you cannot be running him like this because here's the problem with the air raid offense. It, it, it's not perfect. Spoiler alert, fans. It's not perfect. When right. you run fast and you try to score fast or you're three and out fast, the defense is on the field a lot. That right. happens. And so it could happen in a, uh, the whole game. It could happen for a certain span of the game. But whatever it does, it may win player X, Y, or Z. It may happen. And if that happens, they're going to maybe – Sag, take a break, take a breather, right. take a playoff, and guess what? Greg Olson's running down the field. I'm actually glad you said that because that was my concern, remember, coming in, mm-hmm. was the offense going three and out. But you know what? That's not an excuse because the offense did not go three and out. If you look at the stats, the offense was nine for 15 finally on third down. They were sustaining drives. Right. They sustained drives throughout the first quarter, Second quarter and coming out of halftime, and they scored that's, in the first quarter. And sc- exactly, that's more. That's way more than enough for them to to score the three, the touchdowns they scored to win that ball game. Yep. Now yep. you got you when you, and then you have to also look at okay, the, the dynamics of the game changed because of where we were, and then now you now Cliff Kingsbury is getting a little pressure on him, and he thinks he has to throw the ball, at, you know, a thousand times. Mm-hmm. But but Kyler Murray missed on. Well, I should say, drop. Uh, Sherfield dropped a pass, and Kirk dropped a bomb. That was a little, the Sherfield one's a little bit of both. It was a little high for how Sherfield was positioned. I think he was maybe looking for the break a little later, and he kind of yeah. got off foot. And you know, it's, yeah. like yeah. yes, yeah. certain players yeah. would have made that catch, but you can't expect Sherfield to make that catch not at this time in his career. Yeah, Kirk right. had a drop. I mean, that they were crucial when they came. I mean, if it was like first down, first quarter, okay, whatever, it's a drop. But those were crucial moments. Yeah, that just moment that turn the tide. You can't have mistakes like that. But my point to that is that those were two scoring opportunities that they still were able, they, if they sc- hit those, they're in the game. They're back and forth in this game. Right. At some point, your defense has to have at least one to two crucial stops in a game to give your offense a chance. Hmm. And we did not get that from the defense at all. And my my, my, my main concern is, is Vance Joseph not being able to make in-game adjustments? Right. How long you have you been a defensive coordinator and you don't know how to make in-game adjustments to a tight end? Maybe you are lacking in personnel, but, I mean, sometimes you got to switch things up and take some chances. How about getting a little bump on people on the offensive on the line of scrimmage? I mean, how about I mean, that would help. Yeah. How about stop letting him just run free off the line? I mean, at least if you can break up his route, uh, Greg Olson's route, for a few more seconds, it might give Chandler Jones enough time to get there. Yeah. Because if you look at the, the – some of the, oh, man, you're at home watching this game. You're like, get him, get him. They're, they're right there at some some points during the game. They're, I mean, they're right there and just cannot get the kid. And it's like, oh, it's so frustrating. We just look old and slow, man. So I don't know. Why why we why we pocketed this four million dollars we just got off of reconstruction and uh Chandler's contract? Why we just pocket that and do nothing with it and yet we have all these holes and 
and then we give away 2.5 mil to a receiver we could still use. I don't, I don't understand what we're doing. I don't understand what Steve Kime is doing, and that's another hot seat that everybody's on social media all throughout the all yeah. throughout the game is everybody. Yeah, this this guy's got to go. This guy's got to go. Okay, you're not going to do that three games in. So now my question is going to be to you. Because I start to feel like this looks like a little bit like Mike McCoy last year with the defensive coordinator. Mm. But like I say, I give him a pass. I give him a pass because the first two games he held us in the game. His defense held us in the game. Hey, the so offense gave them a lot of passes. Vance yes, couldn't defend exactly. him. How long does it have to go before we start pointing a finger at Vance? Well, I mean, we had the poll up there. It looked like uh, it's kind of split between one game and three-plus games. So people aren't really sure what to think. And I – I mean, it's going to really depend. Like I, I was texting you, if Luke Wilson goes off for two touchdowns and 180 yards, he might be done after that game. It, it, yeah. It takes another big explosion of a tight end to do that to you to just feel like, okay, this is ridiculous. We need to – like this had to have been figured out by now. Um, back to the, the, the Kime point, yeah, he's going to have to explain that 2.5 that he ate for, for Crabtree. Maybe there's a way to weasel their way out of that one, but – they, there has to be some sort of move that they're trying to get. And it's I got to be I, brewing somewhere. I, yeah. I, right now, the offensive line is what it is. Adding one player to that isn't going to fix the whole thing. Right. I'd rather have those five be healthy and gel and figure it out in week seven mm-hmm. and still have like a the rest of your season, season to kind of maybe salvage things. But I'd rather get a linebacker now that can cover the field and and just fix this giant gaping hole. I mean, I call this game the blueprint game. Right. Week one and two, it is what it is. Like, okay, we almost shocked the Ravens and the Lions and the Cardinals couldn't win a game. But the week three was the blueprint game. The Carolina Panthers showed the rest of the league exactly what we can't do. Kyler Murray isn't as fast as he is in the NFL as he was in college because people are faster in the NFL. Okay, right. so keep the pressure on 100% of the time. The tight end is our giant weakness. Anyone with a tight end, which is 31 other teams in the NFL apparently, are going to have a field day against us. And it's obvious. Just run exact routes that Greg Olson was doing and you're good. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. I I, I don't think – I I think that when you're you're learning something, I don't care what it is, if you're in in school learning – Whatever it is you're learning, whatever trade you're learning at your job or whatever it is. Or if you're Antonio Brown for the first time. Learning it for <laughs> learning it for the first time, you're always gonna feel and be a step behind. Mm. So mm. so to say that Kyler's not as fast as the NFL could be true, but I mean in think, scrambling. Right. When you think Physically. about it, when you think about it, if he understands what's going on in the NFL. And he's not thinking too much. Do I run? Do I not run? Do I stop? Do I slide? If he's not, and he's and he's reacting off of instinct, now you become just a little bit more faster than you were before when you're not thinking. Mm-hmm. So when when he finally gets it and he's comfortable, I don't think there's going to be a problem with Kyler Murray scrambling or running around. He's going to look just as probably not as good in college, but he's still going to be able to shred defenses and and and, and piss defenses off. They're trying to get off the field. He, he runs for 17 yards like he did yesterday well, and gets you up down. Yeah, but there's also times where he went 17 yards the opposite way. There's got to be this balance of him learning to throw that out, you know? My point is exactly that, that there, those things can be corrected. Hope so. When you learn and you know what to do, you're a totally different person. Fitz has said that so many years I've, I've learned, after learning so many different offenses, when he finally gets it, Bam! Now it's oh he's not thinking and he can move and do what he you know the same you know the the, the things he can do on a field without right. thinking he's just doing it in, instinct because he knows what he's doing. Once Kyler gets this rookie year out of the way, and that's what I think I think that's what Cliff Kingsbury's trying to do right now. And everybody's wondering why we're not running the football enough. Why is David not more involved? I, I I don't know why I get the feeling that Kingsbury is just trying to get Kyler so comfortable. So that when he really has this thing 100% down pat where he is not thinking and he's reacting and instinct on instinct, now he can start to mix this offense up and let you know let things start to develop as far as what kind of offense we're going to be a balanced or not. Well, what was really encouraging for me at least was that our red zone offense looked way better. Now, yeah. would we have liked to have been in the red zone a lot more? Of course. But 
being smarter and even if it's get the whole offense on the right side and leave David Johnson on the left side, basically one on one, I'm going to take that chance as a pass too, but also giving it to him in a handout. Like there was plenty of things that you could do that he learned from, and I think he's incorporating into this offense to not be so cute and to be a little fundamental because you have a guy when he's not dancing around that can just bulldoze through you. You got to use him, and David was able to at least capitalize on that a little bit. Correct. Um, so I, the fact that Cliff can learn from these things is encouraging. I, it's fans are bummed. It's week three, and now you're realizing, oh, I was wrong. This isn't the year. It's not going to be a worst to first situation. Yeah, but that's what common sense should have told you. Exactly. The Cardinals offense. are who we thought they were. They're young. They're going to learn. They're going to learn the hard way. Ask the Suns what it's like to learn while being young. They've been doing it for the past 15 years. <laughs> 15 is a little over exaggerating. You can also tell their coach being the first time here is going to take some some uh, some knocks on the head too because his offense, when you look at it, it's a little predictable. And what I mean by that, I saw him line three receivers up on one end and one on the other side. I already knew he was going to throw a slant to the other side. I just knew what we knew it was coming. Mm. It's like people can see. I mean, it's like we've done that play over and over and over and over. Start mixing that up. Put those three receivers over there for a reason and, and do something off those three receivers over there. But we know you're going to fake over there, come right back to a slant. And you can see guys jumping the slant route because they already know what's coming. Yeah. It's like he's a little predictable a little predictable on his play calling. And, and, and sometimes, sometimes, I mean, I agree. I, I guess I'll go ahead and agree with Paul when he says we have to run the ball more and more, a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, Johnson but, only had 37 yards. But speaking of David Johnson, I was a little bit more encouraged about what I saw with David Johnson. It was a good looking 37 yards, which and, is weird and to that say. Was hell of good. That was a refreshing, good looking 37 yards yeah. to me. I was like, you know what? I, we scrapped it. We already scrapped the dang on game plan. We knew we wasn't going to stay with the run because we're behind. We're just going to start throwing the ball. We already know that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when the offense was doing what it was doing, and remember on the neutral zone when I told, or was it last week when I told y'all those two dynamics we were missing? Kyler running and David looking like David. It looked like that for that first, second, and going into the third quarter. And they yeah. looked just, they, they were, they were. Fine. And that RPO I mean, that they pulled off. And Kyler has 69 yards rushing. He's yep. like, okay, on eight that's carries. What that's what I'm talking about. So if David can stay running like he was running in that game with intentions to 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 hurt somebody. Yeah. The intentions to say, I'm not going down easy. And that's that's what I saw. Was the production there? Of course not. I mean, <laughs> we got offensive line issues. We got with the defense didn't do anything to keep the mm. offense balanced. So those things happened. The whole dynamic of that game changed, but still, I was encouraged to see how David came into this game. Now, hopefully, he can stay with that. And uh, and I'm not just talking about the touchdown run. I'm not talking about the touchdown run. I'm talking about some of the runs he ran in the game. He was decisive. He was he ran hard. Yeah. And I was really encouraged about that. So if we can keep that up. If he can keep that up, and then Kyler has to be more smart with the football. Uh, he has to be more smart in stepping up into the pocket rather than running out and away from a, a guy all the time. Because if you notice, everything was coming from the outside edge. If he just makes a step up and gets rid of the ball, he'll, you know, he'll, he'll be able to get rid yeah. of the football. Their game, their game plan was for him to break contain every time. It was for him to roll out. They would right. just send one over. Like they would, they would go on both sides, and then they'd have two guys basically just spying him in the, in the short spying zones him. and just go for exactly. it. So, yeah, he has to be able to take that step up because, I mean, Shipley's there. He, he should be able to block at least a little bit, right? I mean, take two more steps up and throw the ball. It's it's rough. Yeah. And, and one of those yeah. interceptions on Kyler, man, I mean, I saw that jump live in person. That was a that freakish jump. Like 50 jump. Feet there almost, it looked like it. So one of my friends said he could have jumped over Kyler, and I said, you know, anyone could do that, but that's different. No, that, that guy jumped dude. high. That dude would look like he was like a 45, 48 inch vert on the belt, you know, going straight up. And he, oh, like yeah. he kept going up. I'm like, <laughs> even Kyler said, I didn't know the guy could jump that high. You think it's going over, you know? Yeah. Hey. What are you going to do on that one? What do you think? How do you, how do you think that uh, Cliff Kingsbury's offense is going to fare now? I mean, we see people are starting to bring pieces and, and blueprints and all these things. Do you think it can go another year? Or does it just going to be the year where it's going to get. So dissected by the defensive coordinators in this league that 
next year you can't you can't run it. You know, this is going to be an offense that's going to be weird to run against Seattle. I mean, that's that's where I look at first. This is going to be. Uh, I don't think it's going to be pretty. Uh, honestly, yeah. I mean, I hope it is. I hope it's going to be good because I didn't expect them to get smoked by the Saints, but they did. Uh, right. But you know, David Johnson's no Alvin Kamara right now, so the, the it could become the thing where people are know they know what to do with this offense, and um, hopefully he can keep innovating. I guess I, that that's what they're toting him to be is this this innovator of offense. Then then you got to know that the air raid might have a shelf life, right? The air raid needs to have a shelf life if if he sticks to what he said earlier when he first got the job. Remember in the press conference, he was like, this air raid is not the same air raid as the as the uh, Mike Leach air raid. Right. We're not going to throw we're not going to throw the ball 60 some odd times Well, we got close. But uh, he said <laughs> it would be more, he said it would be more balanced and have a running attack that would help it sustain in the NFL. The running is the running part of it being a key. I was telling Paul earlier today. Sometimes, sometimes, and, and I think that's what they did yesterday. I think they did this yesterday. Excuse me. I think they did this. I think what they did was, since they already knew that the Panthers were taking away the deep ball, keeping the receivers in front of them, they made their running game the short passing game. Mm. And if you notice, there's a lot of short passes. I mean, two yards, three yards, boom, quick screens. They, that was kind of like their running game. And they moved the ball down the field. Yeah. All, I mean, they dink and dunk, but if you're running the ball and picking up the same yardage, at least the defense is rested. They, the defense rested in this game. Mm. They rested in this game because the offense stayed on the field and sustained drives throughout that game until, of course, at the end, you know, they pinned their ears back and it was a lot of three and outs. But, uh, I mean, they, their short running game was the short passing game early. And you saw what it did late. Yeah. When the guy bit on the, the short pass and Sherfield went past him and he was wide open and dropped the ball, but he was wide open. Yeah. Short passes can set up those long, those long down the field passes. When 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 teams start to get bored with this short stuff, but you're picking up first down, like they just moving the ball down. We got to find a way to stop these yeah. dudes. Next thing you know, you're going over the top because somebody's biting on a dang on double move. And if you see the box is totally stacked, you got to go with that short game as your as yeah. your run game because it's still right. a way to move the ball. It's better than negative yardage or no yardage. Give me your assessment on the offensive line because all this complaining we're talking about the running game, can we even run the ball? Is the offensive line even opening up holes? I didn't see a lot of holes. In my opinion, that sucked. <laughs> exactly. That's what I got for you. It sucked. It sucked. It sucked. It sucked. Eight sacks? Are you kidding me? It felt like all eight came in the fourth quarter. Well, Kyler, Kyler was 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 was. Yes, he's he's not to blame. He's not the only one. But, but I would say three of them because one time he ran out of bounds two yards short of the line of scrimmage, and that's a sack. I yeah. mean So that's on him. But the offensive line late in that game after. Like Kyler said in his press press conference, where they already know what we're doing, we're throwing the ball all every down, and there's there's no mixing up. There's nothing. They, they played. They just came, start playing out, playing up on us, and taking away everything. Now they pin their ears back and came after him. Yeah. And so it's like, I don't have, was, I don't have one offensive lineman that I can point at. Not one. Not one stuff? that I can point out and say it's your fault. Right, the blame right, goes right. on all five. Right. All five okay. from left to right. That, that's fair enough. It it. Every time there was a rush, it was coming from one of the five. It wasn't like it was just coming from one side and that he was getting worked. I mean, it looked like right. everybody was just off and out of their element and, and off timing. And that – I'll take this. I will say from the second half that that statement is true because the first half was better. But So that means that the Panthers had an adjustment. Go figure. Correct. They had a defensive adjustment, and they were able to bring more and more pressure. They sure did. And, and doing that it. and then us missing opportunities on offense and defense, it's just that's what created the, the three-score difference. When you have rookies on your defense that are in, in positions that Byron Murphy's in and a few other guys on the defense, sometimes the veterans help the rookies to be confident. Yeah. And when the veterans are getting their ass kicked, you can see the rookies digress and just kind of fall like, what what, what am I doing out here? What's going on? Byron looked a little lost yesterday as well. And mm -hmm. he was playing so well 
the first two games, he was playing more confident. He was playing. Now he looked lost. He was looking. He looked a little bit lost in that game. Well, I mean, I think everyone was lost when they're all looking around trying to figure out how Greg Olson got open. Exactly. Everyone's exactly. going, "Whose man was that?" As they're running towards Olson, whose man was that? Here's to those who just. <laughs> uh, Something on his head. Must mean can't get right. Can't get right. That's the kid's name. Yep. No, can't get right. Can't get right. Can't get right. Can't get right. And of course, we were on the subject, so it has to be. It has to be the Arizona Cardinals and the defense stopping the dang tight end. I mean, what else is it going to be? The defense made. They literally, really can't get it right. <laughs> the defense made Carolina's backup quarterback. I'm not even going to name him, name him by names. But do you remember that Cam Newton play 60 commercial when the kid said he was going to beat Cam Newton out for the job? Yeah. I remember that. I got that queued up for you. No problem, man. I promise. I promise to exercise and eat right. That's that's what it looked like. It looked like there was a kid out there just beating us. Yeah. That's 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 just um, that is just really embarrassing for a defense. Have you noticed too right now, even today, yesterday, you haven't seen Vance Joseph appear anywhere? <laughs> I mean, you see his coach trying to back him up and trying to, you know, say it's going to be all good. But Well, he's even said that we got to do a better job as coaches. So he's saying we, but he's also saying yeah. you didn't do yeah. a good job. Right. So what, what do you think the game plan should have been with the personnel we have to stop the tight end? That's the tough part I mean, because my, my argument part. has always been we don't have the personnel. So maybe we're just going to be – it's inevitable the tight end's going to, to get theirs throughout every game than when they play this defense. I mean, otherwise, you have to just hope that you can double him. I mean, you, you don't want to do that, really, because you need to stack the box to stop CMC. Right, right. So I don't feel comfortable man, with it at all. It's a hard situation to be in, man. It's a hard situation to be in right now. I don't, I don't, see, I don't see it getting any better. <laughs> no, not unless they make some sort of trade. Yeah, right. How does it get better? I mean, and making a trade is not going to always be the issue. Uh, clean it up because anybody that's coming into a new system is new and they got to still right. learn everything. But I'm, I mean, but so I mean, dreaming is free. Fly. The Broncos are in a free fall, and Von Miller is lost without Vance Joseph. So, I mean, oh, what what do they need? It be all money, money. What that do they need? need? I mean, what do you want? We'll get we'll... this organization ain't going to make a move like that, too. <laughs> if let, they let do, I wake, might die. Let me wake up from that dream. Hey, please. dreaming's free. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, and I, I said that over the course of the week too. Is that we just don't make moves like that? Moves that make us relevant, moves that make us instantly better. No. We don't make moves like that. We bring in the trash heap guys and see if we can find the pieces in the trash to put that piece back together, like the six million, but six million dollar man put the pieces back together and see if we can create and this thing to come back. And it works and it doesn't work. I mean, Carson Palmer, Kurt Warner, those were. Garbage heap deals, in a sense. I mean, they didn't really blow up the league and people going, oh, I can't believe they did that. That wasn't an right. Odell Beckham to the Browns deal. That 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 runs its course, though. We we're too. I mean, we need to have we need to have somebody come in here that's going to be a an instant impact on this team. Right. I mean, what's out there? I mean, it's only trade. It has to only be trade. You got to I mean, if Jalen Ramsey is still crying to get out of Jacksonville. Why not go after the guy? Well, can you cover a tight end? Huh? Can you cover a tight end, though? I guarantee if we have a guy that can cover one half of the field, somebody else will cover the tight end. We can double the tight end, maybe. Maybe. Maybe we, maybe we can get DJ Swearinger to get physical with the tight end on the Dane line of scrimmage and have somebody double behind him and leave that man out there, Jalen Ramsey, if we had him, covering one-on-one. -on -one. Then you get Pat P2 back, and then you got two sides covered? Tied in, be locked up. I'm not saying it wouldn't be an interesting because it certainly would. It certainly yeah. would. I'd still yeah. rather have Von Miller though. So they're not gonna make no move like that. You know that. <laughs> just go ahead and get get that out of your mind. I must have your... hit my head or something. Yeah, don't get it out of your wish list and all of that because it's not gonna happen. <laughs> it's on my but Amazon I card. This, man, I guarantee you this: if this team does not start to get better to the point where they are consistently staying in games or consistently playing at a high level and you don't have games like that we saw defensively steve kine i'm telling you this 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 is the last room this this is it yeah 
this is it, man. There's Steve no way. Steve and Vance could be gone. Yeah, exactly. There's no way you can bring him back. No way. So we'll see how that goes, man. But, you know, Bidwell is a loyal dude when it comes to somebody he likes. It's true. They like the same beer. Huh? They like the same beers. Exactly. This is a tough one, Bird Gang. We kind of just still just kind of simmering on this game. And hopefully we get some attitude and some pissed off players going in next week playing Seattle. Because you know Seattle's not coming in here with They're not caring about where we're down at if we're down. They don't care. They're going to come in here and run shot on us if we don't get up, pick ourselves up off the floor, and get back to fighting. Because we were fighting the first two games. I don't know what the hell that was yesterday. <laughs> But uh, you've been listening to the Casual Sports Show. Earl Burnett, Sean McConnell. Yes, sir. Go ahead and check us out again on Facebook Live. We're going. On, we're still on there right now. Twitter, Instagram, and uh, also the website, www.ksrnaz.com. We'll catch you next week, Bird Gang. Peace. Later.